Amen. Uh, thank you, Miss Alyssa. Uh, as always, it's just a wonderful time when you gather together at this time of the year, uh, just to exalt and uplift our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as the body of Christ in Sequatchie County. And so we're just excited about having all the churches here. And I know they just got a wonderful uh, uh, program or just a wonderful um, uh, a time of worship for us. And so I'm going to just open in prayer and then just turn it over. I think uh, Brandon's coming up to read scripture and then just kind of follow your way uh, down uh, the bulletin, okay? But uh, again, we're just excited. Won't we stand and just open in prayer? Lord, our Heavenly Father, again, we just thank you so much for this wonderful time that you've given us. We thank you for this time of the year. And we thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your only begotten Son in this world that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Lord, just uh, in this service tonight, if we just exalt and uplift your holy and precious name, and, and Lord, just uh, help us to always remember the reason for the season. Uh, Lord, we thank you for all the churches that's represented here. We thank you for their pastors, and, and Lord, just help us to be that salt and light that, uh, that you've called us to be in this community, and, and that, Lord, that we can make a difference. We just pray uh, uh, for our community. Uh, we pray for those that's in need. We just pray for the lost. That, that, that again, Lord, that uh, uh, each of these churches, that, that Lord, that we'd be a, an outreach and, and we can see many, many people one to Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, just now, may your Holy Spirit have his will and your way in this service, and we give you the glory and praise for it all. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now for my favorite thing, to read from the Word of God. Luke chapter 2, starting with verse number 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was out of the city and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in their fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And it shall be a sign unto you that you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward man.
Let's turn in your hymnals to number 89, O Come All Ye Faithful. Or you can look up at the screen. Let's stand up and worship with me.
just believe that their little child is special indeed, and you could grow up to be anything, but who Fisherman out on the sea, or maybe a carpenter building things. But who would imagine a king? It was so clear when the One day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would say?
night tending to your sheep on a hillside in the darkness, trying not to fall asleep. When suddenly in the moonless sky there's a strange and shining light, so brilliant and beautiful that it lights up the dark, still night. And you look up to the heavens, you can see so near yet far, the glow which lights up the light is coming from a shining star. It makes you feel so wonderful and yet you have your fears when suddenly, unexpectedly, an angel then appears. He says, you should not be afraid. I bring news of a birth, for God has just delivered his son to us on earth. In the little town of Bethlehem, not very far from here, is Joseph and Mary, and the little son so dear. For he has come to save the world, and only by his grace can he lift the people out of sin and save the human race. So follow the light of yonder star, angel softly said, and visit with the Christ child there in his lowly bed. Get on your knees and worship him, and thank God for his being. You should celebrate his coming with prayer and joyful singing. Then the angel spread his golden wings and flew off toward the manger, saying, bring your friends and come along. With him, no man's a stranger. Oh, to have lived in that century, to have looked upon his face, to have knelt beside the cradle, and felt his love and grace. But it's just a dream. I was not there, even though I'd like to have been, to have seen the child that God sent to save us from eternal sin. So as you prepare for Christmas, forget the money, gifts, and bills, and give your thoughts to baby Jesus in that manger in the hills. Just thank him for your creation and try to stay away from sin. Then maybe God will grant us peace on earth, goodwill to men. Thank you. I'm Ron Fault, so <laughs> just to erase any questions in your mind. But we are so blessed tonight. We have been baptized in music. You know, there's something about the blessed experience of being enveloped in musical atmosphere. To be able to be so immersed into it that even if you can hardly get a note to come out where it belongs, your heart still joins in. How many of you found that as the choir sang this evening that your heart joined in with the choir? Yes, I see multiple hands. So you're like me. When a square note gets stuck in your throat, your heart still has a way of hitting that glorious refrain of hallelujah. Well, this evening, I'm so happy to be able to represent the community that gives, a community that has a heart that beats according to its closeness to God. And each one of us here have through the year made some type of a special commitment and contribution, first of all, to our families, to our church, and then to our community. And this evening I wanted to be able to just refresh your memories just a little bit. 
with what's been done through the Sequatchie County Fellowship of Churches. We have three primary ministries, that of the assistance fund, that of the food bank, and then the jail ministry. Just quickly, I'll just give you a quick summation of what's been done through the assistance fund. When those individuals find themselves in need of keeping their water on, yes, there are people that have difficulty keeping their water on. Those who have difficulty keeping their gas on, those who have difficulty keeping the electrical power on, they call knowing that they can get a welcome hand that lifts them and encourages them. Through the year, because individuals have responded by their giving, we have been able to, on the average, each month for the last 12 months from last December through now, we have averaged over 16 individuals per month or families that have received specific assistance. And that is because you gave. And then there's the food bank. And I'm going to invite two individuals to come up here. Fran, if you'll come up. Uh, there's Jim. I was looking where you were before you moved on me. These two individuals each have a special calling. If you looked at your SVEC Tennessee magazine, you recognized a handsome face in there. He will be available to sign pictures too. For a small fee. For a small fee. But the, we'll come to Jim just in a moment to let his ego come down a bit. But I want to be able to invite Fran to speak very specifically to the generosity of not only adults who have their ears on and their hearts in tune to the needs of the community, but young people in a very special and specific way. Fran, share. Thank you. Um, thank everybody for coming tonight, um, and thank for the, the large crowd that we have here in the celebration of our Savior, the Lord being born. Uh, we want to give him thanks first. Um, Ron had reminded me that this year we collected money for turkeys to give out at Thanksgiving, and, I, and we started this about three years ago. And we started really late the first year, and I scrambled for money. I mean, I really scrambled for money. Last year, it was even worse. I scrambled even worse. This year, because of the generosity in our community, and because of the Girl Scouts, the Boy Scouts, the Homeschooling Association, our schools and our churches, we were able to purchase 2,000 pounds of turkey or hens, poultry, to give out to the needy people. That's one ton of turkeys, okay? At 3,900 pounds at approximately 70 cents a pound, that's what we collected to give out this year. I am so pleased. We have approximately 300 and, I think our numbers are about 300 and, oh my, I need my glasses. 367 children that came through our food bank to ask for a donation of food this month. That's a lot of kids. And none of them should go to bed hungry. That's right. None of them. We're a bridge. I said this at Thanksgiving. We are just a bridge. All we do with the monies and the donations that we collect through this council of churches is help the individuals that come through our food bank to get to their next check or their next food stamp card, whatever it is, that's what we're there for. We're not there to feed them once a day for 30 days. We're there just to bridge. Thank you for bridging 
and thank the community, small that it may be, we have a big heart when it comes to our kids and when it comes to feeding and taking care of our needy people in this community. I'm thankful that I've been able to be involved with Jim, Pastor Ron, Wanda and Charlie Rollins, anybody else that's involved in the food bank. I'm just tickled to death to be part of it. Thank you. Ron did some figuring and uh, he may be high, he may be low, but I think this is pretty close. Uh, in the past 12 months, we've had about 5,000 volunteer hours. And if you figure even at minimum wage, that's $42,500 it would have taken for a, a commercial entity to run this program. We had $33,600 in cash donated to the food pantry. We collected approximately 2,800 pounds of clothes to give out. I had a mother come in with two kids uh, one day last week. I don't know what the temperature was outside. They had no shoes or socks on their feet and didn't have the money to go to Walmart to buy even a pair of socks. So, uh, and I've learned one thing doing this. Uh, I see as the month goes on, boy, we're getting more people and uh, we're supposed to have kind of a budget what we can spend and, and I said it's just not going to happen. Uh, the, the Chattanooga Food Bank's not going to have peanut butter this month. It means I got to buy that. And I used to worry about that stuff, but I don't worry about it anymore. I just don't worry about it. Whatever people come in the door, the money follows. And I don't even bother really thanking people anymore because it's as if uh, God knows what to do. He knows what to put on people's heart. And you may think you're taking that 10 or 15 or $20 out of your wallet, but uh, uh, God's like a pickpocket. He knows where that money needs to go. And he's going to get it, and he gets it to me, and I'll be on my way at 5.30 tomorrow morning to head to Chattanooga to load up the church van with another load for this month. And everybody in here has seen the movie, um, It's a Wonderful Life, and uh, Jimmy Stewart was at the end told he was the richest man in Bedford Falls. Well, I'm the richest man in Dunlap. Thank you. And then not to put uh, any kind of a shadow upon our jail ministry for Brother Leonard Sutherland and those that work with him and the churches that are represented throughout the week that come in, make presentations for the betterment of that community of people in that JC. That's the yes, it's a justice center, but many of us call it the Jesus Center too because Jesus rules there, and we can be assured that wonderful things are taking place there. I have invited Brother Leonard to be able to make a few comments relative to the uh, Justice Center outreach and how it has been a blessing to individuals, one by one, but then it becomes a congregation of believers. And the result is those believers go out from the Justice Center back to their homes, back to their community, and they take the good news with them. Brother Leonard, let's see, is there a mic up here? I'll get one. Praise God. Truly good to be here this evening. Good to see each one and everyone here. I'm so thankful for the churches of what they're doing. But most of all, I'm thankful for Jesus Christ that came and gave his life that we might have life and have it more abundantly. 
Uh, I want to thank our sheriff tonight for making it possible for us to do the thing we do at the Justice Center. I want to thank each church that participates in what we're doing at the Justice Center. Uh, just Thanksgiving, we just had a wonderful meal, and that couldn't have been possible without churches contributing to the thing that we could buy. When, when we do that, that does not cost the county anything. We take that out, out of church donations that, that feeds them on Thanksgiving. And uh, I got letters thanking me for the, for the uh, Thanksgiving dinner. And uh, uh, I tell them it's not me. It's the churches that does this. This year, I was talking to Brother Leon. Uh, we baptized 110 people already this year at the Justice Center. Uh, so a lot of people are changing their lives. You know, those people in jail, they're, they're just not convicts as they are, but they're human beings. That's some mother's child that's there, and somebody that needs a helping hand along the way. And, and I thank you so much tonight from the bottom of my heart for all that you do to make it possible at the Justice Center because if it wasn't for the churches, we couldn't do the things that we do at the Justice Center. Thank you, and God bless you. The good news comes in many and varied packages. And whether it's the assistance fund, the food bank, or the jail ministry, it's all supported by people who care. By community organizations, institutions within this community that care. And to be able to care means that your heart is sensitive to the prompting of God's Spirit. And when we are sensitive to God's Spirit, there's no limit to what we can do as God blesses us individually. This evening, I'm going to call for uh, the offering. And along with it, I'm going to introduce four of our newest members, hopefully all of them are here this evening, of the pastors from our community, from Dunlap Church of God, Brandon Gates. Come, please. We're going to invite you to help bring forth the, the offering. Oh, yes. We're glad to be able to put the new men in harness here. Dunlap First Baptist, Jeremy Bird. Come on, Jeremy. We got all these preachers that sit at the back. I'm gonna have to do some more training. There's a whole pew up here just waiting for preachers to sit on the front row. You know, brothers and sisters, us preachers, they get to look at the, our face much of the time, but very seldom do they get to see the back of it. <laughs> so it wouldn't hurt us to sit up on the front row. And then Lewis Chapel Church of God. I'm not sure that Caleb Bolton is here tonight. Did he make it down? No, he didn't. But let's remember Caleb as he and his wife are new to our community. And then Jimmy Bird from New Hope Presbyterian. Come on up, Jimmy. We've got two birds that flew in and, ro <laughs> and took roost in this beautiful valley. And the thing is, they may not look like they have the same feathering, but they've got the same heart in tune with God's commission. All right. Now I really needed, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to have to draft three more. All right. Who's going to be the volunteers amongst our preachers? There's one, come on, two, I need one more. I need one over here. 
You don't want the treasurer to collect the money directly. Come on. Yes, we take a little longer to be able to direct your attention to what God can do and what he has done. But it's all because of one who came as a babe in Bethlehem, one who grew in those 33 years of his life to be able to make his way to the cross on Calvary. How much he gave for us and how little so often do we return in his name. So I challenge you this evening in the spirit of the season to give so that Christ's name will be more glorified in this season and in the coming year than it has ever been before. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, it's with reverence that we come into your presence. Our hearts are quiet now. Our lips are silent. And so we wait for the prompting of your spirit upon us. And thereby as this offering is given from hearts that have been touched of your spirit, we pray that every penny will go to glorify your name, that it can be multiplied with the good news of salvation, to be assured that there is a perfect record in heaven being made of the hands that have given in the Lord's name. So bless everyone who is here that has a heart to give, it may be that the blessings received from giving will be received with thanksgiving by those who are in need and glorify your name is my prayer in Jesus wonderful blessed name amen
Let's turn in our hymnals to number 91. Sing Silent Night. You can please stand with me. Silent. Compares and keeps 
for blessings we pray for peace comfort for family protection while we sleep we pray for healing for prosperity we pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering and all the while you hear each spoken need and love us way too much to give us lesser things what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near and what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise we pray for wisdom your voice to hear and we cry in anger when we cannot feel you near we doubt your goodness we doubt your love as if every promise from your word is not enough and all the while you hear each desperate plea and long that we'd have faith to believe because what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears and what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near and what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise when friends betray us when darkness seems to win we know the pain reminds this heart that this is not this is not our home it's not our home because what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears and what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near and what if my greatest disappointments or the aching of this life is the revealing of a greater thirst this world can satisfy and what if trials of this life the rain the storms the hardest nights are your mercies in disguise
hear the Lord's word in song. I was did overhear a couple of ladies talking a while ago, and one of them said she did think the Baptists, some of them looked better. And <laughs> another lady said, well, the Methodists, they sung higher. <laughs> I'm ahead, but it is, it is wonderful to be here, and you know, God's word has been preached here tonight in song. We're going to start out with, uh, <clears throat> Karen is going to sing one entitled, In the... Yeah. In the town of Bethlehem in a manger soft with hay There the Son of God came down There the child of Mary lay He was there 